Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and we're going to be picking up where we left off with HashiCorp Vault, and we're going to be looking at multi-tenancy with namespaces inside of your Vault cluster here. So last time, um, we just set up a Vault cluster, and we want to talk about multi-tenancy with namespaces. So HashiCorp has a pretty good article here. It describes it really well, so we'll just use this. So... It says, when Vault is primarily used as a central location to manage secrets, multiple organizations within a company may need to manage their secrets in a self-serving manner, uh, manner, which means a company needs to implement a Vault as a service model, allowing each organization or tenant to manage their own secrets and policies. Most importantly, tenants should be restricted to work only within their tenant scope. So you can see here there's a, a company, right, Example Corp, and they've got three different business units. It could be HR, finance, IT, whatever, uh, multiple teams, and then that team could have a sub-team and so on and so forth. And depending on the size of the corporation, this can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And you want to make sure that each team has the ability to use secrets, um, and you can do that with multi-tenancy namespaces. So basically what HashiCorp did was um, they used the concept of a namespace inside your cluster. Um, and if you're not familiar with namespace, it's really just kind of like an identity. So it could be a literal name like finance or um, in the case of like, let's say finance has two teams. They have a tax team and they have a payroll team. You could have finance slash tax taxes or finance slash payroll and those would be unique namespaces and finance would be a unique namespace so um, it's really just kind of like a folder structure when you think about it um, so when you create a vault cluster the vault enterprise cluster with a default has a namespace admin so let's go ahead and cl click in here and check this out so I've got a, a cluster it's running a node um, there's some configuration. I do not have the seal right now. Uh, let's see, access the vault. You can manage the vault. You can do all this stuff here from uh, the cluster, but you can't really see a whole lot in the overview, right? So if you go into the cluster view, I can see I have a cluster ID when it was created, the tier, the size, all the other stuff. And then I've got a signed network, which is a HashiCorp vault network. And that's pretty much it, right? So um, we're going to have to... Um, we're going to have to set up this namespace and in order to do that, I'm assuming you have a cluster, right? And connected to it. Um, and if you haven't go back and watch that video really quick, but essentially we just, I have an org that I created called Nimbus DevOps. And then I deployed a vault and created a virtual network page, which is this guy, um, selected a region, which is us East one accepted just whatever CIDR block it gave me, which is fine. And then you just need to make sure this doesn't overlap with any CIDR blocks you have in your existing network uh, in AWS. And then once you create it, it takes a few minutes. Um, and then I just have a, I just use the default vault cluster for cluster ID, just named vault dash cluster. Um, and then for the tier, I just chose development because I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a allow public connections from outside your selected network. That's an option you can do. Um, it just allows, it's easier for testing because you don't have to do all the extra configuration. Um, pretty much every cluster is configured to use uh, or to, to not use. So it's disabled by default for public access. So um, that makes it public. Uh, or makes it private because it's not recommended for it to be publicly accessible. But if you're trying to do this the easy way, um, if you're just getting started and you're not actually deploying this in uh, a corporate environment, leaving it public is fine. So, um, so that's fine. You can do that. So you can see here there's public and then there's private. So I can copy the public cluster URL if I wanted. And that's my vault public cluster URL. It doesn't necessarily go anywhere, but that's what it is. So you can see when I try to access it here, there's a namespace. The default is admin. Okay. So um, that's how you would get to that. So um, yeah, so if we're trying to access this, 
once you do this, um, you're going to need the login page, right? So if I go back to Vault Configuration, there's a Generate Token button. And I'm going to generate an admin token. And I'm going to take this token and I'm going to stick it in here. Okay. And then I'm going to sign in. So there you go. Now I have, I have a secrets engine inside my cluster and there it is. Okay. So we're again inside the admin namespace. Okay. So you can manage those and that's kind of where we're going to go from here. So in the namespace, um, it kind of allows anybody. So teams, orgs, even your application, a dedicated, isolated environment. And a namespace can have its own policies, auth methods, its own secret engine, as we see here. So this engine is just for the admin namespace. Um, it can have its own tokens. It has its own uh, identity entities and groups and all this other stuff. And I can stick all that in here. And it's only accessible in the admin namespace. So if we want to make a namespace, um, I can go to the access here and it has all these options here, but I can enable a new method. You can do all this other stuff, but then there's this option down here for namespaces and it says I don't have any yet, right? So we want to make one. So I'm going to create a namespace and since we're learning, I'll just call it education. Okay. And then I'm going to save and now I have a namespace. It's that easy. So this namespace is going to be saved as a child namespace inside the admin namespace. So the relationship would be like slash, or it would be admin slash education. So if we go to um, uh, admin here, you can see the current namespace is admin, but then the namespaces here, I can see I have education. If I click on it, it'll just take me to education. Um, the namespace selector, that's what this guy is, uh, that's what this is called. It displays all the child namespaces in the current namespace. So right now, my current namespace is admin education. And I don't have any child namespaces inside of here. But if I go back one, right, and I go to the admin namespace, I do see it has a, a child education. Okay, so again, I'm going to select this again. And then we'll go ahead and show you, see, now I'm in the current namespace and there are no namespaces inside education. So that's kind of how that works. So now that I'm in this right here, I can go to access namespace and maybe we're going to create a namespace inside education called training and I hit save. Okay. And so now that I have that, if I come back up here, I can see admin slash education slash, and then a child namespace of training. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. As far as using the HashiCorp cloud, it's pretty simple. Um, that's pretty much it really. The other ways to do this, you can do it from the CLI or you can use curl use doing like an API call. Um, so let's, let me up. Uh, code dot open up a terminal here. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you set up your vault address and your vault token variables. So I can do that here and just do like, um, Let me see here. Let's do the CLI version. So I need my public cluster URL. Oops, this guy. So let's go into our current namespace. Actually, I have it right here. Let's grab our cluster URL. So we're going to go grab this public cluster URL. OK. And then for my terminal, I'm just going to say, um, export vault underscore ADDR equals, and then my public URL. So now I have exported that value. And then we need to set the namespace. So for this, do I want to do, oh, I need a token. Well, we'll do the namespace too. So export vault underscore namespace equals, and then we'll just do admin like that. 
Uh, let's check my vault status really quick. I need to get a token in here as well. So I'm going to go grab that. Boop, boop, generate token. And copy this. Come back here. It's going to just time out. Okay, export vault underscore token equals blah. Check my vault status to make sure I'm connected. Okay, cool. So we're good. All right, so now um, I can see I'm connected. Where's my seal cluster name vault cluster and it doesn't show what my default namespace is in here but i did set my vault namespace as admin so since i set that let's do a vault namespace create and we did education right so let's do finance i talked about that so we're going to make a finance namespace remember i'm inside admin right now right now because that's just where I am. So this finance namespace, as you can see, path admin slash finance, it's created as a child from the admin namespace. And that's this representation. That's how you can tell that. So now I can list them. So I can go uh, vault list name, or I'm sorry, vault, let's get this backwards, namespace list. And we should be able to see our keys, which we should have education and we should have finance. We made one in the console and we're making one from the CLI. Okay, so let's do, we're going to make a namespace called, let's see, we did finance, right? So let's do payroll um, as a child namespace. So I can go vault namespace create, right? Just like we did last time, except this time I'm going to get a flag namespace equals admin slash finance and then we're going to call it payroll so the only difference is this namespace flag so i'm going to say hey create a namespace but i want you to create it with this as the parent so it should create and then we should see the path as admin slash finance slash payroll and there you go admin finance payroll so this is created as a child of admin finance, and you can see that there. And then we can go ahead and list these. If I go vault namespace list, and then you can actually pass like namespace equals admin slash education, for example. And I can see, uh, I'll be able to see the training namespace inside education. And I don't know why my network is horribly slow. Or I could even just do finance, and I should be able to see the payroll key, right? Come on, come on, come on. There it is. And if I pass it without anything, and I just go vault namespace list, now that I have all this stuff in here, what do you think you're going to see? You're going to see the two children of admin because I didn't pass anything and by default I'm just in admin. So you can use the vault namespace environment variable or the namespace flag to target a specific namespace. So if you're working in something, you know, I did the export uh, vault namespace. If I did this with finance, for example, and then I did a namespace list, it's going to use my environment variable. So if I'm working in here and I don't want to have to type dash namespace equals all the time. Um, oops. Permission denied. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Um, you can you can set that and you can just kind of move around as, as you need to. So try that. Um, if you don't want to type dash namespace all the time, um, but you don't want to change your environment variables, you can do dash ns, and that should give you the same uh, same result as typing dash namespace. So in this case, I should see payroll, and I do. The little trick, it's kind of nice. Um, the last way you can do this is with curl. Um, this kind of sucks. <laughs> um, I hate doing this, so if I were to do... 
um, education, for example, uh, this would be the equivalent curl command. You ready for this? Curl header x vault token vault token x header namespace admin request post vault addr v1 sys namespaces education jQuery read dot data. So it says null. There's nothing to do there. So if I if I redo this, if I redid this and I made I have education, I have payroll, right? What if I did? Um, uh, let's do sales. So now you see I already had education, so it says null. Well, I didn't have sales, so I went ahead and created an ID, and I have the path sales. So the curl version is uh, not friendly on the eyes, <laughs> but you can essentially do the same thing that I did in the console with curl, or yeah, in the terminal with curl instead of the CLI. But CLI seems it's just so much easier. So if I come back here now, I go uh, to my cluster. Right, I'm already in it, and I look at the namespaces. I see education, so I'm going to refresh this, and now I have education, finance, and sales. I created sales with curl. I created finance with CLI. I can create education with the uh, web console. So if I, I can click on finance here, and I can see here's my secrets engine. Um, in finance, I can see there's a payroll child namespace. And that's pretty much how namespaces work. So why would you want to do namespace? So going back to my original um, point is that each one has its own secrets engine. So you can have, in this case, you can see a secrets engine cubbyhole, a namespace cubbyhole 11066747. And if I go back to a different namespace, it's still called cubbyhole, right? I'm in admin finance, but look at the ID, namespace cubbyhole 0BE0474F. So this is actually a different, it's it's a different place. And that's because it's using the cubbyhole, but it's in a different um, namespace within that cubbyhole. So it just happens to be called cubbyhole. There's no, I did not name that. So anyways, uh, that's multi-tenancy with namespace. So you can have multiple tenants, um, have multiple engines to have their own access and create your own self-service portal or do RBAC in here and allow people to manage it or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super useful, especially for larger organizations and doing separation of concerns and people keep, uh, keeping people out of each other's secrets. Uh, it's definitely great for audit, and uh, you can create your own policies. You can, you can do your own entities. You can make groups. You can do whatever you want to do inside of here. So anyways, that is an overview of multi-tenancy with namespaces. If you have any questions, let me know. But if not, then I'll see you in the next one.